Hello and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we're taking a look at the new die set, Acorn House. This die set has all the pieces to create a super cute little house made out of an acorn and decorate it with lots of fun embellishments. So let's take a look at all the pieces that this die cuts. There is of course the acorn base and then there is a cap for the acorn. There's a door for this cute little house that has an arch at the top and a window, and it has a score line that will allow you to hinge the door so that it opens. There's also a piece that cuts some steps up to the door, and then there's a piece that cuts the lock for the door or the keyhole, and then there's a piece that you can layer behind it to fill in the keyhole. So there's two tiny pieces for the keyhole of the door. There's also some dies that cut these fun vines. So there's two large ones, two small ones, and then there's this one that fits perfectly on the cap for decoration. There's also some dies that cut a little window that can go up on the cap. So there's a solid one to fill it in, and then there's the window. There's some leaves that layer on these vines, and there's three different sizes of leaves, like fall leaves. There's two different flowers that you can layer and decorate with. And then there's also these little flower buds that you see there that it will cut. Now these little guys will fit on the vines. So they fit behind those little pieces that are sticking out on those large vines. So I'm going to show you here what they can do. So you can fit them right behind just like this. And you can also do the same with these little tiny leaves, which is what I'm going to do on my card today. So the first card I'm making today is a shaped card. So this card is going to be shaped like the acorn. So I have two pieces cut here just out of some cream cardstock, and I'm going to be making my card base. So I'm going to take one, and this is going to be the back side, and I'm just going to create a score line towards the top. And this is where our card is going to fold and open. I'm going to put some adhesive right above that fold. And then I'll just layer that other solid piece that I've cut right on top. So that will be the front of my card. And then the fold will be on the back part of the card. Now I can start to assemble my acorn. So I've cut the main part of the acorn from some craft cardstock. This is some chocolate bar cardstock, which has a nice little texture to it, which is adding to the fun of this acorn. But I also love those stitch details that the acorn cap die will cut. So you can see those stitching details along the top. Now I'm going to make my door and I've cut it from some narwhal cardstock as well as some storm cloud. And I'm just going to cut off the door on the narwhal cardstock and get rid of that frame. And then I'm just going to layer this door on that storm cloud cardstock so that the final look is a dark frame and a lighter gray door. So I'll just add a little bit of glue and just layer that door right on top of the storm cloud door. Now I'm going to do the same with my little window. I've cut that solid piece from a piece of yellow spiffy speckles paper, and then I've got the frame cut from some storm cloud cardstock. I'm just going to add a few little dots of glue, and I'm going to layer that frame over top of that solid piece so that when I put this on my acorn, it looks like there's a light on inside that window. So you can layer the flowers on this little vine here, but I thought it would be cute for those vines to kind of come out from the side of the window, just like some extra detailing on the house. It makes it look very whimsical. So I'm just going to layer that window in the center of my vine there, and then I can just put the whole piece onto the cap.
I just think this gives it more of a fancy look. Without the vines, it's a little more plain and this kind of steps it up a little bit. Now I wanted some yellow behind my door as well, so I'm just tracing the opening of the door and I'm just going to roughly cut out that shape on the outside of my trace line. I'm giving myself enough room to where I have a place to glue it and I'm just going to erase my pencil line so that we don't see it. And then I'll just add a little bit of glue to the frame of the door and layer that behind so that when my door opens it's yellow inside like the light is on just like the window above. And then I can layer this whole door piece onto my acorn. For this card since it's a shape card I'm not going to be using the steps at the bottom so I'm going to layer my or line up my door right along that flat bottom of the acorn. Now I can add my keyhole. So I've got a, that solid piece cut from some black cardstock. I'm going to put that on there first. And then I'm just going to add some tiny dots of glue at the top and the bottom. And I can layer the piece that has the keyhole cut out of it on top of that. So now to work on the vines, like I said, those little buds will layer behind there and so will the leaves. So for mine, it's sort of a fall themed card and I thought it would be cute to layer the leaves behind these little parts on the vine. So I'm going to be using three different colors. This first one is cut from some pumpkin spice cardstock, that dark orange. Then the next one down the vine, I'm going to layer a tiny leaf cut from some fake tan cardstock. So this is just going to add a lot of color and variation to my little card here. And then finally on that third little bud there, I'm going to add the tiny leaf that's cut from some yellow sunflower cardstock. And I'm going to do the same to the vine that curves the other direction so that both sides are the same. And once I have those all on there, I can add these to each side of my door. So I'm making sure that I like how it overlays the... Um, frame there it kind of gives it that 3d look but i'm making sure that i don't have it going in my door too much on this side it doesn't matter but to make it even you don't want to overlap that hinge on the other side so you can see that point of my leaf there is going to stop right at that hinge so that my door still opens And then I'm also going to use those tiny little vines and I decided I wanted them a different color so I've cut them from some noble fir which is the darker green and I'm just going to layer those like they're coming out of the same spot on the ground. And then there is a die that cuts the little leaves that can go at the bottom of these vines. There's one that cuts a big one and a small one. I decided to just use the small one since I've layered my vines sort of together. And part of the reason for this is because it's a shaped card. If this was on a card base, I could spread these vines out a little more. But in this case, I need everything to be on the actual acorn since it's a shaped card. So I went in with those small leaves and they are cut from some rainforest cardstock for a third color of green. Now I'm going to layer some of those larger leaves just behind this acorn cap just to add some even more fall decoration to this cute little card. And then finally now that my acorn is all finished and decorated I'm going to add it to that card base that I created earlier. So I'm putting a whole bunch of adhesive all over the front of that card base and I'm just going to layer and line up this acorn right with that die cut shape. 
And then finally, to add the sentiment, I'm using the thanks, thanks, thanks set. And I'm going to add the sentiment to the inside of my card using some walnut ink to match the browns of the outside of the card. And I just think this little card is so cute. It's cute just by itself, but you could also add some critters or fairies or gnomes peeking out of that door, and I just think it would be adorable. So next up, I'm gonna create a card with this, and I've cut a stitch rectangle, as well as some grass from some Bristol Smooth cardstock. And I'm gonna do some ink blending. So I'm starting with my grass, and I'm starting with some shabby shutters. And I'm just going to blend all over this Bristol cardstock with that ink and give it a nice light layer of color. And then I'm going to go in with peeled paint, which is slightly darker, and just darken up the top edge of the grass. And I'll just blend these two colors together until I've got them blended and looking the way I want. So I just went back in with the shabby shutters blending tool there, and I'm just gonna blend them till I have them looking the way I want them. Now I'm moving on to the main background, and this is also cut from that Bristol cardstock. And I'm gonna be using three different colors to create an autumn blended background. So I'm starting with Wild Honey and this is going to be the top of my card. So this is the darkest color. And then I'm going to go in with some scattered straw. And that's going to be my center color. I decided that I needed to pull that Wild Honey down just a little bit more. So I'm going in with scattered straw through the center and I'll just blend those two together. You can see you get this very subtle color change between these two colors. And then finally I'm going to go in with Squeeze Lemonade towards the bottom for that really brightness towards the bottom, which will be a nice contrast between the green grass. And of course, as before, I'll just go back and forth between those two colors until they're blended nicely and you don't see that line between them anymore. And finally, I'm going to add some flecks of gold. And I think that this looks really nice on this orange and yellow background. They're very subtle. They don't stand out until the light hits them, which I just think is a really cool look. So I actually used two different metallic watercolors here. This is more of a yellow gold, which you can see that shimmer. And it just looks so amazing. And then I also went in with the red gold, which is slightly darker, and just added some more flecks of bigger splatters of that red gold. So you can see there's not too much difference there, but it gives it variation in that texture that you're creating with those watercolor splatters. So now to move on to my acorn, I have it cut out of craft card stock again, just like I did on the last card. But for this one, I'm not going to decorate it quite as much, so I wanted to kind of define the edges a little more. So I'm just going to go in with some tea dye ink and just ink up the edges so it looks like it has that round shape of an acorn. I've cut the cap again out of some chocolate bar cardstock. I also think that this would look really pretty cut out of some brown glitter, which I have plans to do in the future. <laughs> it's a very magical house with a glitter roof. And then for the door on this one, I've cut the door out of some brown wood grain cardstock and also some cream cardstock. So I want that cream to be the frame around it. And then I'm gonna cut the door off for the brown and just layer it on top of the cream. So this door, because it's cut from some wood grain cardstock, it has that wood grain texture, which is a really cool effect. And especially on this house, which I'm not decorating quite as much as I did the first one. 
Again, I cut a piece of that yellow spiffy speckles paper just like I did before. I traced it and I cut it out with my scissors and I'm going to layer that behind so that when the door is open, there's that nice warm glow inside. And then for this one, I'm just going to add a black keyhole. I'm not going to layer something behind it. I wanted to show you that you can kind of get a different look and you still get that look of the keyhole whether you layer something behind it or not. So now for the little window up top, I cut that frame out of the cream cardstock so that the frame matches the door frame. And then I also have that yellow spiffy speckles paper layered behind for that glow inside. And for this one, I'm going to add those little steps. So this is cut from some storm cloud cardstock, and I'm just layering it over top so that you don't have that white step at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and add this to my little house that I've got here. And those steps are going to go kind of beyond the bottom of my acorn. And then for the window, I actually use a really thin foam square to just kind of pop it up, give it some dimension off of that acorn cap. So this is a super simple house, but I'm going to decorate it with some squirrels from Let's Go Nuts. So before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and assemble my card a little bit here. I'm going to put that background that I created onto a card base. And then I'm going to go ahead and stamp the sentiment on the grass before I put that on my card. So I'm using sentiment stamps from Let's Go Nuts. This says, hello friend, I'm grateful for you. So I'm just lining it up in my Misty tool here, kind of towards the bottom. I want to make sure I have enough space for the acorn house at the top. And I'm just going to stamp that in some black ink. So now I'm going to add some foam tape to the back of the grass so that it's popped up from the background a little bit. And I'll do the same for my acorn house as well. So a little bit of foam tape on the back of my acorn house and I'm just going to line that up right above my sentiment centered in the middle of the card. So I've got some squirrels already colored and cut out from Let's Go Nuts and then I also have this birch tree that's die cut from some paper bag cardstock so it's a different colored brown than all the ones I've used in my acorn and I'm just going to use this as a branch coming off the side of my card. So I'm just going to glue that down and then I'll just cut the excess that's hanging over the side off. So now I've placed my little squirrels where I want them. This little guy he's sleeping on the roof of the house. This one's going to hide inside the door so that when you open the door you see him and I like that he's peeking out through the window there so you can see his little face. It's just so cute. And then this one is going to go to the side. Now his tail is kind of hanging off the side of the house and that house has popped up so that's why I added a little foam square just to his tail. And then the one that's going to go in front of him here, my little baby squirrel, I've put some thin foam on him so he can be popped up too. So everything is sort of dimensional on this one. I'm going to do the same to this guy with the acorn on the side. And then of course I am going to take that little pile of acorns and pop it up on some foam as well, just like the baby squirrel on the right side.
finally added some thin film squares to the little guy that's running across my branch up top. He's kind of jumping off the end. And then I'm using those leaves that are from the acorn house die set to decorate around my acorn house. So I've cut again these big leaves. I've got them from some pumpkin spice cardstock, some baked tan cardstock. I'm just tucking these behind the house to kind of fill in. I just think that looks super fun. And then I also have some cut from sunflower, which is that yellow, and then also apricot, which is that peachy color you see up at the top, which actually I just really liked the look of that peach color mixed in with these bright autumn colors. So I'm adding them to the sides of the house just to add some more color to the card. And then I'm also adding them to the branch at the top. And I'm tucking them behind those little pieces that come off the branch so that they look like they're on stems. And then this is that finished card. I love that shimmer when it catches the light of that gold in the background. And then you just open up the little door and there's a little squirrel hiding in there, which is just so cute. So now let's take a look at some cards by the design team. Megan made this beautiful card using all the die cuts with that acorn house. I love that butterfly and that squirrel. It's just so pretty. Audrey created some super simple shaped cards and I love that wood grain cardstock that she used that adds that texture in her splatters as well. Grace paired this acorn house with the fairies, which I just think is adorable. I just think that fairies probably do live in some acorn houses and I love that pink sky. I love Letitia's card and her unique color scheme that she used using the teal with the orange. And I also love that she paired the acorn house with the lift the flap tree background. I just think it's so sweet. I love Lynette's slimline card and how she paired that acorn house with all those squirrels having all that fun. And I also love how she used the stump from the Meadow Backdrops landscape die set. Elena created a super clever shutter card by cutting a hole out of the center of that acorn house and now you can see what's going on inside where these little squirrels live. It's just super cute. Kara created this really elegant card and I love her gold embossing for a unique look on those squirrels. I also love those glitter leaves that she used under her thing sentiment. And then Tammy created this super cute slimline card and her background sort of inspired my background that I made today. I just love all those squirrels everywhere and it gives me all the fall feelings. Thanks so much for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye!